Father in heaven, this assignment you give us sometimes can be difficult. When people have to be told the truth, they may not be comfortable or a truth they may prefer to be whispered when the scene is loud and public. But we pray that you may forgive us where we've gone wrong. And as we come together in communion, we come as a forgiven people we come as a renewed people. We come as a people who now know the will of God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our message this morning is wash it or lose it. Wash it, wash, wash, wash. Wash it or lose it. Wash it or lose it. Wash it or lose it. Whatever it is, to continue having it, you must wash it. That's why the message says this morning, wash it or lose it. Any delay to wash it means you lose it. The message is, wash it or lose it. Any decision not to wash it is a decision to lose it. And the message this morning is wash it or lose it. If you value it, whatever it is, and want to keep possessing it and using it, you will wash it to avoid losing it. And that's why the message this morning says wash it or lose it. The ball has been thrown to my court and your court. We are responsible for whether we lose it or keep it. And that's why the message says, wash it or lose it. During the Holy Communion, the Last Supper, the Bible says that Jesus went to the upper room with his disciples. And they sat around the table where food had been prepared. But something had not been done. In the tradition of that time, when visitors come to our house, there will be a slave 
at the door. And there will be water for ceremonial cleaning at the door. So that when visitors come, the slave washes their feet and they come in for supper. This was the water that at a certain wedding, Jesus turned into wine. And so they came in, but in this upper room, the owner of the house was not there. Nobody washed their feet. And they sat around the table, and food was in front of them. And the question that was in the mind was, okay, should we proceed eating without washing our feet? And if we have to wash, who washes whose feet? Because this was the tradition. And the Bible says, John chapter 13, we will begin reading from verse 4. That Jesus rose from supper. From where they were sitting around the table. John chapter 13, verse 4, verse 4. And Jesus rose, give us a version that is easy to understand. And Jesus rose from supper, and he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Jesus rose up and took a towel and tied it around his waist. Verse 5. Then he poured water into a basin, and everyone is seated there wondering, okay, who will wash our feet? And Jesus rises up, takes the towel. Why? Because the towel was there, but there was no slave to wash feet. And takes the basin, because the basin was there, but there was no slave to wash their feet. And took the water, because the water was there, but there was no slave to wash their feet. And so they, he poured the water into a basin, and he began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was guarded. Verse 6. He came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? He's saying, you are the boss. You are Lord. You are not a slave. Do you really want to wash my feet? Really? You, Lord? Verse 7. Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you do not know now. But afterward, you will do what? You will understand. What I am doing, Jesus says, Listen, I'm the boss, that is true. I'm the master, that is true. I'm the teacher, that is true. But what I'm doing, you don't understand. You can't understand now. But afterward, you will understand. Verse 8, Peter said to Jesus, you will never. <laughs> Peter said to Jesus, you shall never wash my feet. Never. You are the boss. I'm subject to you. You wash my feet. Never. It can't work. Never forget about it. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no relationship. You have no part in me. Jesus says, My relationship with you depends on me washing your feet. And if you love this relationship, I must wash it. If I don't wash, you lose the relationship. He says, if I do not wash you, what does Jesus say? You have no what? Hey, you can read. The, the, the Bible is on the screen. If I do not wash you, you have no what? You have no part in me. It is over. Verse 9, what does the Bible say? Peter, realizing the importance of that exercise of foot washing, Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if this is how serious things are, then you don't have just to limit yourself to the feet. Are we together? You can also wash my hands, and please go ahead and also wash the head. And he, he was looking around, willing to undress, to be fully washed. Are we together? He says, hey, 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 Jesus, if this is about having a relationship with you, 
Then not only legs. Please go ahead, wash the hands, and when you are through, have the head and wash it. And while you are washing, I will think of what else you will wash. Wash it or lose it. Verse 10, what does the Bible say? Jesus said to Peter, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. But he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not every one of you. Jesus said, listen, you had already taken a bath, but we only want to address the feet that have gathered dust. But his, Jesus said, anyway, even though I'm saying that, there is one of you who is not clean. Verse 11 clarifies that by saying, for Jesus knew he who was to betray him, that is why he said, you are not all what? Clean. Let's go to verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. Verse 14, what does the Bible say? If I then, you are Lord, and what? If I then, you are Lord, and what? If I then, you are Lord, and what? And teacher, have washed your feet you also ought to do what? To wash one another's what? Feet. Wash it or lose it. Listen, brethren. Foot washing is a very important aspect of the Holy Communion service. If you have participated in Holy Communion anywhere in any church without foot washing, it was not Holy Communion. You are just having a meal. Let me repeat it. If you have been participating in any communion without foot washing, that was not the holy communion that Jesus put in place. You were just eating whatever it was. Jesus says, if I, your Lord and teacher, can wash your feet, then you must also go and wash one another's feet during the communion service. Foot washing symbolizes several things, but people know one of it only. And I will mention three things that foot washing symbolizes. Number one, which is well known, is that foot washing symbolizes humility. Humility that is required for everyone, of everyone who follows Jesus. It takes humility to wash one another's feet. Without humility, we can't serve the master and others. Foot washing is about humility. Humility is a Christian way of life where you accept to be taught, you accept to be directed, you accept to be advised, you accept that others are better than you. That is humility. Humility is where if there is a contest for something, you let others have it. And Jesus says that humility is a necessary requirement that people have to have. Number two, foot washing symbolizes continuous forgiveness of sins by Jesus after baptism. And that's why in verse 10 he says, you have all taken a bath. We are just washing your feet. You have been baptized. We are only addressing the dirt that you have gathered along the way. After baptism, as we go along the way of faith, there are sins we still unfortunately commit. We don't need to get rebaptized. Let me explain. There are so many people baptized. I've heard even pastors request baptism here in Baraton. Oh, I'm touched by the message and I'm feeling I need to get rebaptized. Listen, friends. Listen, friends. After we are baptized, we have been birthed. But as we go along, we gather small dust here and there. That's why Jesus says that I need to clean your feet. And it is during this communion that we renew our relationship with God. And this communion is sufficient. We don't need rebaptism. 
We only need rebaptism if the sin is public and circumstances of our falling are public. But whatever else it is, and we are suffering from the burden of guilt, this communion is enough. You don't need rebaptism. You need to get that. You don't need rebaptism. And that's why Jesus said, this communion is that opportunity to accept the symbolization that whatever dust we have gathered, God has forgiven us. And today, as we wash our feet, that's why we say, wash it or lose it. Number three. Foot washing symbolizes forgiveness of one another. We forgive those who offend us. We forgive those who embarrass the church. We, we restore relationship. Washing one another's feet restores others from the clutches of guilt and severe relationship. We offend each other, but during communion we get restored to each other. Listen, friends. During Holy Communion, it is time to get restored to one another. If you have a problem with somebody and you come carrying that problem and go ahead and eat communion and maintain that problem, you are not bound for the kingdom of the free. Listen, friends. When we can wash one another's feet, it's because we have forgiven one another. We have restored relationship. And that's why all pride is put aside. You know, grudges are maintained by pride unless he apologizes. Unless she apologizes. I'm not going to take anything unless I get an apology. Written and mentioning the exact things you did, I will not forgive. That is pride. But during the communion, we become humble and we say even a smile will be treated as an apology. We will not go around demanding, I demand an apology. That is a demand from hell. The children of God stand willing and ready to forgive even before an apology is given. Brethren, this service is a service of forgiving one another. This is a service of restoring relationship. And that's why we say, wash it or lose it. This is the importance of foot washing. It is so critical that we can rightly say that our present life and eternal life depends on this service. If you don't participate in this service for whatever earthly reason, you are not bound for the kingdom. You cannot fail to participate in this service and go expecting God to bless you tomorrow and on Monday. Forget it. If Judas was invited for communion, you have no reason to walk away. How much do we offend God for you to be so angry that I need to settle this matter, then maybe next communion I'll eat. You may not make it. Listen, the show of anger itself, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, is from the works of flesh, the devils working in us. If you are so angry that you can't forgive, it is the demon in you, not, not the Holy Spirit. Brethren, we need to forgive one another. We cannot postpone forgiveness and say, I will not take communion. I still have issues to settle. Settle them now. Wash it or lose it. Your life after this communion will depend on whether you participate or not. And we begin by foot washing. Participation should not be superficial, but with all its meaning of foot washing. Wash it or lose it. The choice is yours, brethren, to either wash it or lose it. Participate or be doomed to a miserable life after this and ultimately miss heaven. Listen, we have a responsibility. Christ has invited us to this communion. He has taken the towel and through somebody, he wants to wash your feet. And through you, he wants to wash somebody else's feet. You need to participate. 
Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity of the Holy Communion. Thank you for the opportunity to wash our feet after we have gathered dust the whole week in various events. Forgive us where we've gone wrong and renew our relationship with you beginning today during this communion. May we be forgiven our sins and may our guilt be lifted. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.